The ANC's national chairperson, Greta Mantashe, got a less than warm welcome at Trade Union Federation Kasatu's elective congress this week. He was booed off stage as he prepared to deliver the ANC's message of support. Hundreds of delegates drowned his voice with song chanting Hamba Gwede Hamba, which means leave Gwede leave. It disrupted the Congress, resulting in an early adjournment. Mbazima Shiloh is the former General Secretary of Kusatu and wrote about this event through the lens of the tripartite alliance between the ANC, the SACP and Kusatu. Good evening to you and welcome. Mantashi is a former member of Kusatu, as you reminded us in your writing, and has previously enjoyed political gravitas amongst unionists. How much do you think this stung? Uh, thank you very much and good evening. It must really have stung him uh, very much because these were his comrades. He would have gone there, I think expecting a hostile uh, reception, but thinking that he'll be able to ride the storm, sing a little bit with them, calm them down, but it was not uh, uh, to be. But I think uh, for me, the real issue is that uh, you know that happened and it happened at a time when some of the leadership in government in the ANC are former leaders such as you know Gorongwane in finance uh, you know uh, in terms of labor Tulas Ngaisi who is also holding on into public uh, service you've got um, someone like Ibrahim Patel and the president himself. And one would have hoped that knowing that the Cosato Congress was coming, they would have sat down to say, look, what can we expect? What are the issues? How do we assuage them? Yeah, it sounds, uh, judging by the way you've described it now, as if they, they didn't, they certainly didn't seem to have anticipated or they would have prepared better, as you're just saying, and also assuming, in a sense, that it might be business as usual. But, Mbazima, how much was this event a moment that, on the one hand, puts the ANC on notice, and on the other affirms that if the appropriate changes at Lutuli House are made, the alliance might have stronger future prospects? You know, I think for me, uh, the key thing was the message to the ANC by workers. First, public sector workers who were very angry about what happened with the 2018 um, wage agreement, with last year's wage agreement, and this year's 3% uh, proposal. Secondly, the broader working people, because of the cost of living uh, brought by high petrol, there being no public transport, and all of those issues. But I think you are right that uh, it's just a warning to the ANC. Like I said in my piece, I think I know that Kosatu would have said they are going to ballot their members. Indeed, they did have a ballot. The majority of the delegates there would have said we must break away from the ANC and align with the South African Communist Party. But I don't think many of them had a mandate from their own unions. So it is just really something to say to the ANC, please take us serious. But I don't see, one, the SACP standing on its own in the elections, and two, Kosato deciding to want to back the SACP away from the ANC. <laughs> Uh, Mbazima, we'll circle back to the SACP issue because I think it deserves more than an honorable mention. But uh, as Ngiswa Losi reiterated Kasatu's partnership and place in the alliance, what's interesting in your writing is you're offering some insights on a reconfiguration of the alliance. You cite the Norwegian model, which um, is, is more about a relationship that's based on merit and subject to ongoing reevaluation. Share that idea with our viewers. Yes, um, I think I'm really making uh, two points. That firstly, the, the COSATO need to accept uh, that uh, the ANC is a multi-class organization. That there are some areas around which there will be disagreement. There are areas around which there will be agreement. They need to drive home key issues without which they don't think that the alliance will be saving them more appropriately. So what happens in, in Norway is that the Labour Party is in alliance with uh, the 
Norwegian ELO, which is the equivalent of COSATO. What they do, they sit down, they draft a manifesto, and they say, look, out of these 20 issues, on these six, we are all agreed with the trade unions and will ensure that they are implemented. And they try and meet every week, every second week, or at best, once a month to say, what have government done? What legislation have they put in? What has worked? What is not working? What are the problems? Why is it not working? What changes do we need to make? And I think that's really what COSATO need to try and look at. To try and think that, I mean, if they still want to have an alliance, to think that they will choose the ANC, I mean, the SACP over the ANC. There is no way in which that is going to succeed because most of the leaders of the SACP are also leaders of the ANC. And I don't see them choosing to go into the wilderness with the SACP away from the ANC. You know, when you when you explain uh, the Norwegian model, you know, one thinks of the many years we've been actually having a similar conversation, uh, Mr. Shiloa, about the alliance itself, the criticisms, uh, you know, for the longest time, especially from Kasatu, that, you know, the ANC will talk left and walk right. They've raised issues over and over and over again about how they feel this isn't an ideal relationship. And yet the glue is very strong. Why do you think the glue is so strong? Because I think even Kosato understand that the ANC is not a socialist organization. It's not a communist organization. That it is a multi-class organization. That being in government, it has got to look at issues that relate to business people, to the broader working class, but obviously to issues that workers are worried about. And that they need to balance all those. And I think if you look if I look at it from a Cosado perspective, yes, I would be disappointed in terms of what is happening currently with the public sector wages, sometimes with the public sector, um, I mean, with the public transport. But I think Cosado cannot say they have not reaped the democratic dividends. If you look at the string of new labor laws that were able to come through from 1995 uh, to date. So I think that's why the glue is strong. It does not mean that it may not come to an end. But I think if, if it comes to an end, it will be more like what happens with the Labour Party and the TUC in the UK, where some years they support them, some years they don't support them. I just don't see, uh, you know, Kosatu simply walking away now because the majority of the workers I think some of them are members of the ANC in their own right. Yeah. Some of the leaders of Kosatu are members of the ANC and leaders of uh, the ANC in their own right. They are less likely to just simply walk away from the ANC. All right. So I think then that answers the SACP question. It leaves one more. Uh, what do you expect uh, will be the way in which Kosatu plays things in respect of the ANC's elective Congress? I think both the ANC and COSATU will uh, work out. Firstly, COSATU and the SACP will seek to ensure that as many people as is possible with a working class background make it into the NEC, hoping that they will be able to help champion a working class agenda. Secondly, COSATU itself will hold off until maybe the middle of uh, 2023 in deciding to beg the ANC, how to beg the ANC, in the hope that the Alliance meeting will be able to outline three or four key issues that they are all agreed on and say, let's implement this to save uh, the Alliance. I think both organizations need to, to understand that they need each other. They all need to, to, fa to, to save uh, uh, face at the moment. Uh, Mbazima Shiloa, thank you very much for your time and your insights. We appreciate it. Former uh, uh, General Secretary of Trade Union Federation, Kasatu.